Glad to have you with us at Way to Go Podcast with Mark Hostetler, worship pastor at Eagleville Bible Church. Nice to be here, man. Thanks for inviting me. You paid me. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. How do I look? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you and your hair's too long. How I know. come you haven't had a haircut? My goodness. Please open up the state so I can get a haircut. <laughs> yeah. We're dying here, man. Oh, I was so believe goodness. you know, I thought about it actually. By the time they open up the barbershops, it will be two months. Oh. I, well, won't it be? I mean, yeah. close to two months since yeah, all Bill, that was shut down? Yesterday, or day before yesterday, my son looks at me. My youngest son, he looks at me. He's got this sad look on his face. He goes, you mean we had to wait another month for a haircut? I mean, he is miserable. The hair's over his ears, and he's always like, oh, oh, oh. No. You know? Well, so, come to me for counsel because my hair is always over my ears. Yeah, so I'll yeah. help him. I'll actually right, help him go. out with it. Yep. You know, it's been crazy times, man, in Ohio yes. and the whole uh, United States and the world with the coronavirus, a lot of shutdowns, a yeah. lot of economic woe, mm -hmm. a lot of nervous people. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, but still a great time to see God. And one of the things, you know, our prayers have been for revival. Uh, they got to really do something that people will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, to me, that would be the most meaningful thing that could happen yeah. right there. Absolutely. To remember that he hasn't left us. You know, it right. feels like everything's come apart. Everything's falling apart. But man, God Almighty has not left us, man. He's still with us. He's right. still here. He's still present. He's still sovereign. He's still in control. That brings hope to our high hearts, man. I'm telling you. It is. Yeah. And we're told to love him. And one of the things that I thought, you know, you and I could talk about today is just loving God because I want mm -hmm. people to have you know, to come out of a time like this where it's been a, it's gone from stay at home to stay safe, but stay safe still means stay at home, basically, right, right. except if you're going to work or church mm -hmm. or, you know, all the, all the other exceptions that there are. But it's a time, if you do have more time alone, I would like to see some of us, all of us really spending more time with God yeah. and more time seeking him. I want to see the people, the church, I want to see people in the community seeking God, perhaps mm -hmm. that haven't sought him before. And one of the top commandments in the Bible is to love the Lord your God. And that's the first right. point we want to talk about today right. is love the Lord your God. And it says, hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And yeah. so there it is. I mean, that that is your top commandment. It says it there in Deuteronomy. Jesus Christ said it. Everyone knew it in the Old Testament. Everyone knew it mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Christians today still know. If you ask most Christians what is the top commandment, it's going to be to love God. Yeah, to love God. And the way we expand in our love of God is to first realize that he loved us. In 1 John uh, 4, 19, it says that we love him because he first loved us. If you right. don't get that, it's going to be like running into this wall every time right. you think that I'm going to, with within the capacity I have within myself, I'm going to love God with all my heart, soul, right. strength. Listen, if you're not being taught by the love of God first, then you're not going to be able to do it. First, you have to understand his love towards you. Right. And man, when you understand his love towards you, the automatic reaction is to love him. Well, it's re it reciprocates more. I think, too, one of the things that people have a hard time loving God is they don't see God. God is invisible to the human eye. Therefore, it is tough. Yeah. Therefore, I think people have a hard time. I was reading in Mere Christianity, which was a bunch of lectures or short radio shows that mm -hmm. was done by that were done by C.S. Lewis and then converted into a book and he was talking about loving God and one of the things he said in that speech he was giving was don't manufacture emotion That's right. you don't have to worry about manufacturing feelings or like okay loving God means I have to feel a certain way how would you treat God if you loved him yeah what would you do that's right would you obey him would you mm -hmm. pray more would you be giving would you what what is it you would do now go do those things the love will come Mm. You don't need to worry. And I think a lot of times I've thought about it even being in church at times where right. you feel like you come to church and I got to feel a certain way. You know, and, and sometimes I've come, I've been a pastor uh, for years, decades at this point. Uh, you come to church, there are some days you come to church and you feel, uh, you know, emotional and upbeat. And there are times you come to church and you feel dead. And I haven't gotten worked up about it either way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because God's there no matter how I feel. You know, That's I might have right. woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And uh, so, you know, my feelings aren't all... Woo, you know, yeah. and that's okay. And, and they don't have to be. And I have found this in life. My emotions don't have to be any certain way. My feelings don't have to be any certain way. Yeah. And I think it was Warren Wearsby, a book I read years and years ago, where he said, you don't have to be, no, you were never called to be a manufacturer. You were only called to be a distributor. Right. And I think that's what you're trying to say is just distribute the love, but don't, you don't have to f worry about coming up with it. You know right. what I mean? Like, well, I have to feel a certain way before I actually exercise my love. No, obey. Do you always feel like Do you love your wife every day? Well, this is on camera. I hope she's yeah. listening. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I do. I love her all the time Absolutely. in my heart, in my spirit. Absolutely. Right. But there's times where she might not feel that because of the way I'm acting, because of the way I'm, you know. I'm, right. But there, there may be days where you feel nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there may be days. Do you feel like you love your wife today? A better question was, do I feel like I love anything today? Yeah. Do I feel yeah, anything today? Or am I just emotionally, I'm numb? This is why I don't go by emotions. Mm-hmm. I love my wife. I love my wife dearly. I love my wife now more than when we were first married. I adore her. I think she's awesome. Right. Uh, she's great. We're very close. We do all kinds of stuff together. I never worry about how I feel. I learned that when I was dating her. You can't go by just some magic feeling. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you're talking about loving God, I think that sometimes people want to have that. Ma- I got to have that magic feeling. I got to have, yeah. there's got to be some way I feel. And we work so hard to feel something where I love C.S. Lewis saying, don't worry about that. Yeah. You don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to make it up. That's right. Just seek God. Mm-hmm. It'll come. You don't just seek God. You don't have to worry about it. So, cause emotions yeah. are like this. God is steady. Yep. He is a constant. Never he changing. is as constant yep. as the North Star. Mm-hmm. He is as constant as sun up and sun down. He is as constant as seasons. He's constant yeah. all the time. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I'm going to read Luke 11, uh, where Jesus responded to um, somebody questioning about this. And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And when we're talking about Deuteronomy 6, that old, that's what Jesus was referring to. Right. That, that is the most important commandment. And so what does it mean like to love him with all your heart, right. with all your soul, with all your mind? They're all like, I don't know how to distinguish that. You know what right. I mean? They're all together, really. Right. You know, your heart is your will. You're going to choose him. You're going right. to choose to follow him. Your soul is the seat of your emotions. It's, it's everything in me is going to come out in right. love for God. Your mind is your intellect. I'm going to grow in my knowledge of him. Right. I'm going to grow in my understanding of him. I'm going to do my spend the rest of my life knowing God more, right. you know, and your strength is put all those together and carry it out man. Right. with all of my passion, with all right. of my heart, with all of my soul. I'm going to chase after God because I love him. You know why? Because he first loved me. Right. But it's not, it doesn't have to be that ethereal thing. Like, I don't think it has to be, I think just read your Bible and pray. And do what yeah. he tells you to do. I, I man, I, when it came to spiritual growth, I mm-hmm. remember going to P. I went to a. I didn't understand it at all. People talk to me about growing spiritually. Like, what do you, is there like a little spirit in me that needs to grow? <laughs> it needs to grow. Like, I seriously, I'm trying to like wrap my mind around mm-hmm. what are you guys even talking about? So I went to talk to a professor about it and ask him about it, and he goes, "Oh, you are. Don't worry about it." And I'm like, it didn't answer a question. That's I had to figure helpful, this out. Right? No, I had to figure right. it out in life the hard way that Bill, spiritual growth is just, you pray, you read the Bible, you do as God leads. That's growing mm-hmm. spiritually. Mm-hmm. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't make this something that's impossible to figure out. Just keep it simple. Yeah, Love is a simple, love is, a, is the simplest thing in the world. Your heart is so full of love. You have one kid and you wonder, how could I ever love another kid when you have your second kid? Yeah. I love this kid so much. Is there going to be any room in my heart for this kid? Yeah. You have another child and you love them just the same. You have yeah. another child, another child, whatever it is, yeah. you love them just the same. You have one friend, you find another friend, you love them all just the same. Mm-hmm. Your heart has the capacity, a natural capacity to love multiple people to care. It is a well that does not run dry. Mm. And when you've got God putting his love in your heart, you don't even need to worry about this stuff as the simplest thing in the world. Just keep it the simplest thing in the world. That's just right. Love them. That's right. Love and, and, and when you say that, it reminds me of the Pharisees. It reminds me of in Luke 11, actually, when the Pharisees, Jesus told them, woe to you. Right. Because they were giving, they were doing all these, all these commands kind of thing that they added to it, that right. they added to the law. And it actually says in uh, Luke eleven forty two, it says, Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all of the kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Right. He's, he's telling them, you guys are, are strictly adhering to a rule and ex- strictly doing that, and you're, you're missing out on justice and the love for God. Right. You know, expand your capacity. Right. Yes, it's good to, to give. It's good to do that stuff. But you guys can't do that and neglect a heart passionate right. for the love of God. Because they, you know? they were so busy in the business That's right. of religion. We don't want to be like the that. The business man. of tithing mm-hmm. mint mm-hmm. and spices 
out in the backyard? Yeah. And did I exactly get one tenth? And I'm so worried about the stuff that God's God not worried Mm -mm. about that kind of precision. What he was worried about was just, hey, just love me. And if you're if you're trying to measure your love by what you do. Man, it's you're you're well, missing it. You're missing it to a point. But I think that love is seen in obedience because well, it clearly absolutely, says it. Yeah, Jesus clearly said says that. Bible, yeah, right? Jesus said, "If you love me, obey my commands." Right. Because I think one of the weakest things in our society right now today <clears throat> is we're not getting past for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Mm-hmm. That whoever believes in Him will have eternal life, and they will not perish. I love that verse, and I think that's a fantastic verse, and it's a verse that everyone needs to hear. That God loves you so much, He cares for you so much, and you can have a relationship with Him. But, but that's not the only verse in the Bible. That's right. And what I find yeah. a lot of times is people just say, well, I just got to love. So it doesn't really matter how someone behaves. Somebody could cheat on their wife. Somebody could uh, uh, be an addict. And somebody. And it doesn't, love just means, I, I just love you no matter what, and I'm leaving you there. Where Jesus Christ was, his love for the sinner was calling the sinner to repentance. Yeah. That was his that's love. Right. His love was getting them on a better path. And in John 14, 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love them and show myself to them. And I love that if you love me man you're going to keep my commandments because that's part of what love is loving even for others is keeping of the commandments if you love your fellow mankind you're going to keep your commandments you don't even need to worry he said that's the top law if you follow that you'll naturally keep the 10 commandments Mm -hmm. if we love god we'll naturally follow through and do the things that please god because you can't love your spouse without pleasing your spouse Mm -hmm. you can't love your friends and then ignore what it is your friends are asking you to do or doing things that are hurting them you wouldn't do it yeah because of love right yeah and and i think the the main motivation for me to love him and to follow his commandments is is this reason bill it's because i know he loves me and he gave me those things to protect me to guard me to keep me in the straight line you know he gave me these commands to help me right i love him thank you god you gave me direction you gave me a way to walk that's going to be beneficial for me and everybody else around me so i'm going to do that because i love you right and my motivation might be because I saw he answered a great prayer. My motivation That's might right. be because um, I see the beauty of the world around him. Mm-hmm. And I just love a God that can make that kind of beauty. Whatever the motivation is, uh, certainly that, that we really appreciate with God, you know, allow that to be the fuel. But one thing I noticed this week, and I, I, it was troubling, to be honest with you. I was doing my daily huddles, and Matthew 28, 19, and 20 are the marching orders for the church, going to all the world, mm-hmm. make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things in verse 20, as I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the end of the age. These are, these are two of the rock-solid foundational verses in the Bible, so I'm working on verse 20. I typically for the daily huddles, I'll punch the verse in the browser and I'll hit images and I'll see what right. kind of images people have created. I'll share one of those to the church page. I could not find an image that had the whole verse. I can only mm-hmm. find images that said, lo, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Right. Jesus is always with you. I'm like, well, that's great. But how in the world do you leave out the obedience part? Because Jesus Christ being with me makes sense. Hey, you know, when it's hard and you obeyed me, it's hard. You made a choice to be moral. It's hard. You resisted Mm -hmm. temptation. It's hard. You went and loved your spouse when it was hard to love your spouse. Know this. I'm with you even to the end of the age as you obey me. That's right. we, we've taken that whole verse and we've almost made it sound like, hey, if you love God, it doesn't matter if you obey him or not. Because yeah. you know what? He's going to be with you to the end of the age. It's so naive. It's unbelievable. But I see, like, I don't see people come out and say that. I see the results of it. Yeah. I see people living this out. I hear the way that they talk. And I'm like, man, you have such a shallow, one inch, inch deep kind of Christianity mm-hmm. that to me, it's like, I can't follow God and love God and not listen to what in the world. Look at the Old Testament, how many people got in trouble because of yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I tell you, it's, it's, you can see it in marriages. You can see it in other relationships. We're talking about love of God and, 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 and us. Right. But you talk about how about fellow Christians beating each other up over things. Right. I mean, first John, it says, listen, if you, if you tell me that you love God and you hate your brother, right. You have no love of God in right. you. Right. The love of God isn't in you, you know, just like our marriages. They're falling apart all around our society, man. There's no covenant-keeping uh, conviction in our heart, man. There's right. no obedience to what we said years and years ago uh, when we said, I vow to you, right. my entire life to you, whether you're sick, whether, you know, whether it's good times, bad times, I vow myself to you. I covenant myself to you. Well, the same thing with the Lord, 
We need to covenant ourselves with him, man. We need to grow deep in our love with him. And that means you're going to obey him. Right. You know, that's that's going to be a byproduct of genuine love for God. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, too, uh, you've got love for God. You've got to keep his commandments. And there's a reliance on God. Uh, Jesus Christ said in one of the prayers, give us this day our daily bread. I've never thought as an American I really needed to pray about my daily bread because mm-hmm. I, you know, we already have it, and, and we live in a, a, thank God, in a land of abundance and where it's easy to get your hands on bread, honestly. Mm-hmm. However, I've always taken from the verse not to make it literally about bread, but to make it about I'm just daily depending on God because I still I need wisdom. I need strength. I need oh help. I need answers. I mean, I need God yeah. all the time, and what I find is this. The people I rely on the most are the people I love the most. Yeah, That's a fact. Yep. If I want to love God, that's going to come out of, Am I relying on God? Because the mm-hmm. I look in this time, man, we're, we're going through a tough eight weeks in this country. Yes, we are. Our church has been in a tough stretch, and we don't see our people. It's been hard on us. It's been hard on the, on the congregation. And knowing to me, like, I feel closer to the people I'm in contact all the time because there's a reliance on that fellowship. There's a reliance on that support. It means the world to me. My yeah. love goes up yeah. in times of reliance. Because I'm relying on other people. When I'm relying on my God, my love for Him is going up. And when you when you see the faithfulness of those people that you're relying on, it expands your love. Right. You know, it's like a balloon. You know, you blow right. into a balloon. You think it's full. All yep. of a sudden, it takes more. It the, the capacity for more grows, and yep. it's awesome, man. I love this verse in Psalm 32, 10. It says, "May the um, many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in Him." Right. Are you relying on God? Know this: His unfailing love surrounds you. Right. That's awesome. Oh, it is awesome. I mean. So, so we're lying. I, I think that you go to work every day and you're driving down the road to work. Pray to God. Uh, maybe pray with your wife before you leave the house. Pray at night before you go to bed. Whenever it is you is the best time for you to pray, set that time aside to seek God. Uh, there are times yeah. I'll see God, I'll just, I'll read through the Psalms. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. just read it and say, God, what's what's the anchor verse? What, what's the verse you're trying to point out to me right now? And that that's always a huge help to me as well. Yeah. So you got to love God. That means keeping his commandments. That means relying on him. And there, there should just be a thirst, to be honest. Uh, Psalm 42, 1 says this, As the deer pants for the streams of water, Mm -hmm. so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? And it's an interesting thing when you read that whole, a lot of times people in that psalm, that's kind of the verse they know because it's a really famous verse in the psalms. But he's talking about three times he says, my soul is downcast within me. Soul, why are you downcast within me? Soul, why are you downcast within me? Because he's going through a hard time. And as he's going through a hard time, he's thirsting for God. I'm thirsting for you because he knows God is that source of help. And God is that source of strength. And this is the man that the Lord himself says, this is... David is after my heart. Right. He's a man after my heart. Why? Right. Because he thirsts for God, right. man. He wants to see him. He's got, he says in that passage, Psalm 42 and 43, it's my tears, tears all the time. Right. You know, my bed soaked with tears. Why are you downcast, oh, my soul? Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. You know, he right. continually reminding himself. I love that passage. Right. And it's true of us right now. We're in a unique situation right now, man, where we have to be pressing into God. I love Matthew 5, uh, the Beatitudes, where it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. Right. They will be filled. If you hunger after God, man, God will fill you. He's going to honor your request to draw near to him. Right. Draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. There are times right now, I, a young man contacted the church last week, has been in church in a long time, and said, when is church open? I want to. I got to get back to church. Yeah. Revival, man. People are coming in. Look, if you feel, we're talking about loving God today, but loving God assumes a relationship. A relationship with God comes through his son, Jesus Christ, who yeah. loved us so much that he sent Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, paid yeah. for all of our sins. I, my whole slate can be clean. If I put my faith in Jesus Christ and just say, Jesus, would you forgive me of my sins? God, would you give me eternal life? And he'll give you eternal life. Not only would he give you eternal life, a life in heaven, but he'll give you a new life today. And I would encourage as we close this time in prayer, uh, if you've never prayed to put your faith in Jesus Christ, you may never made that confession, let it be now. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are listening. And just pray, God, uh, that you would help that there's somebody here that's never put their faith in you. May they just pray, God, would you forgive me? Would you give me eternal life and give me a new life today? And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Have a blessed week.